Energy changes are important for a lot of chemical and consumer products. The good news is that they're really easy to measure. All you need is a thermometer and a calorimeter. A calorimeter is just an insulated container. In this lab, we'll be using some metal calorimeters. They're kind of nice, but you can actually construct one from two styrofoam cups and it works really well. The materials we'll need here are, first, the calorimeter. You'll need a ring stand with a ring and mesh. You'll need a Bunsen burner, a 50 milliliter graduated cylinder, a 250 milliliter beaker, some tongs, a thermometer, a metal cylinder, and a soluble salt compound. First, fill the calorimeter with 100 milliliters of distilled water. Then, measure the initial temperature of the water. This should be room temperature. Weigh 10 grams of your salt and pour it into the calorimeter. Use the mixture to fully dissolve the salt and keep an eye on the temperature. Record the maximum temperature that the solution reaches. We'll use that change in temperature in our calculations. Then, dispose of the solution. For the second part of the lab, Fill the calorimeter with another 100 milliliters of distilled water. Measure the initial temperature of the water and weigh the piece of metal. The initial temperature should be room temperature again. It'll probably be the same as it was before. But you'll set up your ring stand and Bunsen burner. Fill the 250 milliliter beaker with enough tap water to cover your piece of metal and set it on the ring stand to boil. Once the water has started to boil, carefully put the piece of metal into the water. Let it sit for a few minutes to ensure that it reaches the temperature of the solution. Measure the temperature of the boiling water and record this as the initial temperature of the metal. Next, use the tongs to carefully move the metal from the boiling water to the calorimeter. You'll want to do this quickly so that the metal doesn't lose too much energy to the air. Mix the water around a little bit and record the peak temperature of the water. Record this as the final temperature of the metal and the water. When you're all done, clean up your lab station and run your calculations. Our first calculation is nice and simple because we've done it before. We're just going to be looking at the energy change in the water based on the mass of the solute. So what we have going on is we have this ionic salt that is bound together by ionic forces. And we have a solvent, water, that's bound together by hydrogen binding. When we add that solute, well, it dissolves and our intermolecular forces change. And because those change, the amount of energy between those bonds changes. And that energy change is going to cause the water to either heat up or cool down. We're able to measure that using a thermometer, and then we're able to plug those numbers into our mc delta t equation. So we're just going to plug in our variables, figure out what was the energy change in that water when we added that solute, and then we're able to figure out energy per gram for that solute. So let's go over those numbers real quick. For our mass of water, we had 100 grams. That's because we had 100 milliliters, and water has a density of 1 gram per milliliter. Our specific heat of water is 4.186. Our final temperature for the water was 32 degrees Celsius, and our initial temperature was 21 degrees Celsius. So if we plug those numbers in, what we're going to get is we're going to get 100 times 4.186 times 32 minus 21. And when we run all of those calculations together, we're going to get a value of 4,605 joules. Okay? So then, that's our Q. That's our amount of heat that was released into the water. And that came from this solute dissolving. So we need the mass of that solute, which was 10 grams. We measured that. So all I need to do here is take this, this number right here, and divide it by this amount right here. So I'm going to take 4,605 divided by 10, giving me 460.5 
joules per gram. And this is the number that I need for that lab write-up. So your numbers will look a little bit different. You won't be using potassium hydroxide. We'll use a different chemical. But you'll run through these exact same calculations and arrive at a number with joules per grams in its unit. Our second set of calculations are also very straightforward. In this one, we're just doing a temperature equilibrium. And we're going to take a little piece of metal that will have the exact mass of we're putting it into boiling water so that we can know the exact starting temperature for that piece of metal. And that's going to be about 100 degrees Celsius, depending on your thermometer. Your thermometer might have an error of a degree or two. And then we're going to take that piece of metal that's at 100 degrees, and we're going to put it into room temperature water. The metal will give some of its energy to the water, and it will cool down. The water will receive some of that energy, and it will heat up and we'll get a thermal equilibrium where a piece of metal and our water will be at the same temperature. So that's why we're going to measure the peak temperature of that final water. That calculation will be just like other thermal equilibriums that we've already done, where we have the energy that's going into the water is the energy coming from the metal, and adding those together should equal zero by the conservation of energy. So I just have MC delta T for the water and MC delta T for the metal. Breaking out my delta T, I've got T final minus T initial. Let's plug in some values. So here are all of my values that I measured from my lab. First, I've got 100 grams for my mass of water. I've got 4.186 for the specific heat of the water. And I've got the final temperature of the water being that 27 degrees. Now, my initial temperature of the water was my room temperature, which was 21 degrees. I measured that. My mass of that piece of metal was 59 grams. My final temperature was just like the water. They should be at the same final temperature because they're a, a thermal equilibrium mixture. And then my initial temperature was that temperature of the boiling water because I left it in there for long enough to reach that boiling temperature. So that was 101 degrees Celsius by my thermometer. So now I'm going to take all of these values, I'm going to plug in, and I'm going to solve for that specific heat for that metal. Now that I've got all of my values plugged in, I'm just going to multiply my 100, my 4.186, and my difference of 27 and 21, which is 6. And then I've got 59 times the difference of 27 and 101, which is negative 74. It's very important that I remember that 101 was my initial temperature, so I'm subtracting that. My metal was losing energy, so this should be a negative number. I've got all of my... I've multiplied my numbers together, and now I have 2,511.6 joules, that's how much the water took in, plus a negative 4,366 times C. And C is what I'm looking for. So now I'm going to solve for that by subtracting 2511.6 from both sides. Now to get my final value of C, I just divide both sides by my negative 4366. And when I run that final calculation, I get my specific heat being equal to 0.575. And that's my final calculation. So those are the two calculations that you'll need to do for the lab. And then you'll give me these results in your discussion section.